it seems to me that every single time there's a new trade agreement that a Democrat pushes, um, I looked into Clinton uh, and I obviously, you know, was uh, here for Obama. They always say that whatever fill in the blank new trade agreement is has unparalleled side protections for the environment, labor and public health. And it's going to do great things for you know, union workers in Indonesia and to protect the world's uh, oceans if it's TPP or if it's uh, NAFTA, uh, you know, uh, Bill Clinton talked about uh, putting rigorous side agreements on. And we know from the merits and the substance of these uh, of these agreements, uh, both in the written form with TPP, which thankfully hasn't been implemented, as well as what we've been living through at NAFTA, thanks to analysis and reporting from people like you, that, you know, this is just simply not true. But it's highly technical it's hard to figure out and so my question for you and and this will be you know definitely geared towards democrats or people likely to be voting in a democratic primary which i'm sure is over like 95 percent of this audience how do we get really specific in the sense that we could say look bernie sanders and elizabeth warren yes they're probably i mean bernie definitely is warren seems to definitely be she has a shorter career obviously but i think you could confidently assume they're on the right side of these issues. If Sherrod Brown gets in, he's definitely on the right side of these issues. And then, uh, you know, pretty clearly Joe Biden's consistently been on the wrong side of these issues. But for candidates, and frankly, I guess this is for any of them, they're all going to say that these, that, oh, I'll only support agreements that have great green and labor uh, standards. But because it's so technical and because Democrats always say that, what are the kind of specific questions that, as an example, if you're at a candidate town hall or something like that, to really narrow down what a candidate actually means when they talk about their stance towards trade so we can get highly specific and know where people are actually coming from on these agreements? Yep. Very good question. So the first of all, one of, I think, the the best sort of overviews of what is a progressive set of rules of the road for a trade agreement. And this is not to toot my own horn, but it's something that I wrote with Jared Bernstein, mm -hmm. who after after he had been, a couple years after he was Vice President Biden's chief economist, mm -hmm. he and I were having a conversation about, you know, what would be the thing we should be calling for? Let's let's help summarize that. So it's called the New Progressive Rules of the Road on Trade, and it's on Jared's blog. So if you look up Jared Bernstein, you can see this New Rules of the Road, Progressive Rules of the Road for Trade. And that lays out in, you know, 15 pages what it looks like. The trigger questions, folks can actually get talking points <laughs> sent to them with those questions specific to NAFTA, the renegotiation, but broader if you go to our action page, which is www.replacenafta.org, there's a sign-up form where it says, do you want to be part of the team that makes sure we replace the corporate rig trade agreements? And we actually are helping people, lots of people did it in this last election cycle, go to town hall meetings and ask the right questions. That's www.replacenafta.org. Sign up on the action list because... Literally, you can sign up and then you can say what you want. You can say, I want to know what questions to ask. The, the short answer is the things that, that can differentiate clearly between who is for real and who is not is a question about investor state dispute settlement. Hmm. Will you oppose any trade agreement? Or if you're president, will you ensure every future U.S. trade agreement does not have investor state dispute settlement. That's a bright line question about corporate power. Same thing. If you are elected president, will you ensure that our trade agreements do not contain any new monopolies and powers for big pharma? Bright line question. You either have the patent rules or you don't have the patent rules. On environment and labor specifically, the question to ask is, will you ensure that environmental and labor standards, in the way it's written as tough environmental and labor standards, can be triggered automatically so that enforcement is swift and certain. And that sounds like a complicated question. All it means is the difference between having standards that can be actually enforced by unions or the public bringing up a problem 
versus having to rely on trade officials to start the process. Mm -hmm. And there are a bunch of commercial rights and trade agreements that can be triggered. For instance, here, here is what this means practically. A, we have these intellectual property rules and trade agreements, and domestic law gets changed so that if a copyrighted uh, product, if a, a pirated you know, CD comes in, if a pirated uh, a fake knockoff of a movie comes in, there can be, that can be stopped at the border. And if a product comes in that is supposed to be made in Germany, but really it's from China, and it's, it's a lie, the way the customs forms are filled out is a lie, that can be stopped at the border. What we need is a system where products that don't meet a trade agreement's environmental and labor standards can automatically be stopped at the border, mm -hmm. that you don't need to go through a whole special rigmarole to try and enforce those standards. That's the same level of enforcement like intellectual property rules or other trade rules. That's, that's what it boils down to. But how you ask the question, again, sign off at www.replacenafta.org, and we will get you the specific talking points. Awesome. And of course, we will link to all of that on our homepage at majority.fm. Lori Wallach, you are so important. Uh, and this work is so important. I really appreciate it. I hope everybody will follow up on all of those fronts. And if you are participating in this primary in any capacity, get really, really specific because these trade agreements are, I mean, it's one of those things. It's definitely a 1% versus 99% issue. Unless you're on a boardroom, uh, for, you know, uh, Pfizer or something. These agreements are not good for you. <laughs> They're bad. Uh, so Lori Wallach, she's the director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. Lori, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate your time. A thousand thanks to you. And folks, if you feel you want to get more comfortable with the details, the other place to go is tradewatch.org. And we literally have, as a, as a report card, what the demand was from progressives, and then how the agreement measures up. And it's in language for civilians. You do not need to speak NAFTA ease. So please get involved, and thank you so much for doing the show. I oh, appreciate it.